Another big complication of kidney disease, which is not very well appreciated, is the mortality issue. And I do want to talk about it. It's not a happy topic, but it's important to note uh, because many of my patients with kidney disease are often afraid of dialysis. And that is something to certainly be afraid of, um, or at least to, to avoid being on. However, a bigger fear of mine is actually the fear of death. Kidney disease is extremely deadly. Those with kidney disease are 16 to 40 times more likely to die than to progress to kidney failure. And this may even be an underestimate as I'll show in the next slide. Those with kidney failure don't fare any better. So if you make it to dialysis, uh, still your chance of survival is pretty bleak. It's 42% at five years. And this is actually worse than some cancers. So this was just published last year. And this is looking at the risk of mortality uh, in someone as they get older. And you can see that as you are in the, if you are 25, 34, and you develop end-stage kidney disease and you're on dialysis, your mortality skyrockets by 500 to 1,000%. And it goes up to someone here that is, that is of the age, similar to the risk of dying of someone that is uh, 84, 85 years old. Um, which is incredible to appreciate or even comprehend, but it helps put in perspective that preventing disease is much better than treating disease after it's happened. Um, uh, so it's, uh, it's, um, it's, it's something to take note of. The reason I mention it is that because some people have actually studied this in, relate, in relation to diet, and if there's even uh, an association, you know, possibly a way to modify uh, this unfortunate and dreaded complication. So uh, this was a meta-analysis uh, or a summary analysis of six uh, prospective studies, uh, including 14,000 people with kidney disease. And eating a healthy dietary pattern was associated with a lower risk of mortality, about 27% decrease in risk. What they defined as a healthy dietary pattern included fruits, vegetables, fish, legumes, cereals, whole grains, fiber, and less red meat, salt, and refined sugars. Again, uh, fish is a great food. So in this study, it was supportive of health. In other studies, uh, it's been shown not to be supportive. And in a similar note, they looked at uh, a different study looked at uh, those who are already on dialysis. And as you know, that that is a group of uh, patients that's already a very high risk of uh, fortunately passing away. This was 11 countries, 8,000 people with a median follow-up of 2.7 years. And what they found was actually two things. The first finding, which was unexpected, was that they found that folks on dialysis do not consume many fruits and vegetables, and that's likely because we as a healthcare society have actively advocated for not consuming these foods because of our concerns about their potassium, protein, and phosphorus content, some of which I've already discussed and some of which, the remainder of which I'll discuss momentarily. So they actually had to measure the amount of fruits and vegetables being consumed, not per day, but per week in the median number of servings was eight per week, which is very low. And only 4% consumed the recommended four servings per day. And the final finding was that those in the highest fertile of fruit and vegetable consumption uh, were associated with the lower risk of all cause and non-cardiovascular mortality. Uh, so it suggests that perhaps these foods uh, have uh, 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 may be healthy even in those who uh, are on dialysis. And this is kind of the halfway point. So I wanted to uh, provide a little bit of comic relief. So some of the famous kidneys, uh, you will be tested on this later. Uh, my personal favorite is uh, Kid Rock. Uh, uh, at any rate, uh, we'll move on. Uh, so the kidney stones, <clears throat> uh, fiber has been, um, so it should be kidney stone. Here we go. That was a, uh, uh, I'm not sure why that was in there. Uh, kidney stones, uh, the prevalence of kidney stones is about 10% and the prevalence is increasing. Uh, the most common stone is a calcium oxalate stone and 78% of stones are indeed of this type, calcium oxalate. The risk of recurrence is 40% at five years and 75% at 20 years. Um, and uh, you may have already had a kidney stone. You may know someone who has had a kidney stone because 
Uh, kidney stones are relatively common in society, and there's a lot of reasons why, and that includes the, um, uh, the warmer weather. Uh, people tend to uh, not drink as much water as they used to, uh, and a variety of other reasons, including the consumption of animal protein. And this is uh, published from the 70s, uh, but it, goes, it looks at data going back uh, further than that. And there's just been a robust amount of evidence suggesting that the uh, amount of animal protein uh, is associated with the formation of kidney stones. And this goes back to World War II or the end of World War II. And uh, again, another paper from the Stoneys, just to show how old this uh, thought process is, is that uh, 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 it's been asked several times, should recurrent stone formers or anyone who's had a stone become a vegetarian? in the hopes of preventing the formation of another stone. The treatment of kidney stones is one of the areas of expertise of mine. And uh, I ultimately end up recommending a plant-based diet to all, almost all of my stone formers uh, because of this reason, um, is that the eating animal protein does increase the risk. And it's been written in studies time and time again that stone formers or anyone who's had a kidney stone should be advised to limit the intake of all animal protein, including fish. And the reason being is that animal protein increases the urine concentration of various things that all promote stone risk, including calcium, oxalate, uric acid, and acid levels. And that's not good um, if you've had stones because that could cause you to have stones again. Unfortunately, people who have a calcium-based stone actually think that they need to eat less calcium. And if there's nothing that could be further than the truth than that. And this has actually been studied uh, in a randomized controlled trial that was published in the England Journal of Medicine some two decades ago. And what they showed is that it's not that uh, you need to restrict calcium, what you need to restrict is animal protein and sodium. And that's a, an example of a, a kidney stone. They're very small. That's a fingerprint uh, or finger in the background. So you can see the outline of a finger. Uh, of the fingerprint, uh, uh, but even though they're very small, they can cause big problems and certainly cause uh, a lot of pain. And these are more recent studies showing that those eating a vegetarian diet have been associated with a lower risk of kidney stones. And this is coming from the EPIC uh, Oxford uh, cohort. And what they show is that uh, of 51,000 uh, people from England and Scotland, vegetarians had a 31% reduced risk of uh, forming stones, uh, whereas meat eaters were associated with a 64% uh, increased risk of kidney stone formation. Uh, so why are, why are plant foods potentially uh, helpful or beneficial in reducing the risk of kidney stones? And there are a variety of reasons. This includes the lower urine acid levels, a lower amounts of uric acid, lower calcium levels, sodium levels, and then also uh, the increase in this all important uh, uh, urine citrate or alkali uh, levels in the urine. Uh, because uh, because uh, uh, plant foods have uh, citrate uh, and potassium, you can actually use them to treat uh, stones. Um, and actually uh, the opposite has been done in, uh, in, uh, in the medical profession for decades. Instead of recommending folks eat fruits and vegetables, we've been actually just pre prescribing the relevant uh, elements or micronutrients in the form of a tablet. We've just been giving uh, uh, patients with this problem uh, potassium citrate, which is commonly prescribed for those with calcium oxalate stones because quote unquote, an alkaline ash diet or a vegetarian diet is too difficult to follow for mo most patients. And I find that a little uh, disappointing on multiple levels. I think many patients are just not informed or have the opportunity to learn about this. Not only that, I think uh, the, there's not a lot of time for providers uh, to do that within the current constructs of the uh, health system. And then finally, I think we are not set up as a health system to support patients in their uh, transition to a healthy diet. Uh, the current system is kind of met, is set up for uh, the prescribing and dispensing and the ingestion of medications, which is helpful in many contexts. But in this context, um, telling someone to eat healthier may 
uh, be more beneficial and have more benefits than just taking a potassium citrate tablet. As you can see, potassium is found in fruits and vegetables and so is citrate. Uh, so it's not surprising that you can get the same benefit by just eating more fruits and vegetables. And I have had several patients who've come to me eat, taking potassium citrate, and then we've ultimately been able to get them off of the medication uh, by increasing the amount of fruits and vegetables uh, being consumed on a daily basis. So it's, that is very fulfilling when that happens. But what about all the oxalates in plant foods? So many of you may have heard this term oxalate and that it has uh, been associated with oxalate stones. Uh, oxalates are very important in plants because they bind to calcium and they facilitate the growth of plants in the areas of high calcium levels in the soil. Unfortunately for humans, that oxalate can bind to calcium in the diet and then form stones in the kidney. That can be problematic. Some foods are extremely high in oxalate uh, and examples of that include spinach, Swiss chard, beet, greens, uh, rhubarb, cashew, star fruit, dark chocolate, potatoes, and black tea. And certainly if you ate all those foods and you had a, certain, a couple other risk factors, you could develop a, you could uh, develop a kidney stone that way. Um, but there is more to it than that. And recent evidence suggests that uh, restricting amount of oxalate uh, does not necessarily reduce the amount of oxalate in the urine. Uh, and that is because absorption varies depending upon the solubility of the oxalate in the gut and the other, other aspects of diet, like the amount of calcium that is being absorbed or the amount of calcium that is being consumed. Uh, and there also is the emergence of uh, research from the gut microbiome, such that uh, certain bacteria like Oxalobacter formigenes uh, may digest oxalate and prevent its absorption and ultimate excretion in the urine. So it's not so straightforward that, uh, that eating plant foods will cause kidney stones. Certainly they can. And so I do see some people who have this issue um, of having too much oxalate in their urine, um, but that is generally uh, a rarity and not the rule. And uh, these folks uh, do see me in the clinic and we, I monitor them and we adjust their diet as such to reduce uh, uh, the levels of oxalate in their urine. Uh, and it's certainly if you are someone that's in the situation, you should consider seeing a nephrologist so you can be monitored appropriately. Uh, but uh, it doesn't mean that if you have, uh, that for the average person, that if you eat some nuts or some spinach, that you will immediately have a kidney stone. And actually, um, that's not likely to happen. Um, there are other risk factors that folks should pay attention to. If you have bowel disease, bowel surgery, recent antibiotic exposure, or you take vitamin C, which I generally don't recommend, uh, you can put yourself at risk for forming a stone. So folks with these uh, comorbidities or these risk factors uh, will also want to uh, pay attention or perhaps see a nephrologist to avoid problems. Mm -hmm.